So Apple recently dropped the brand new M4 MacBook Pro lineup just in time for Christmas. And boy, there is a lot of hype surrounding these brand new machines. And justifiably so. They are the fastest, most capable and most efficient machines Apple has ever made. But they're also the most expensive. Now, in past videos, I've always recommended that you visit the Apple certified refurbished store instead of buying brand new. These refurbished machines come with a replacement battery and a brand new outer casing and can save you literally hundreds of dollars compared to buying brand new. I mean, buying older M-series MacBook Pros has been an absolute steal recently, giving users pretty much the same performance as the latest and greatest models, but for a fraction of the price. I mean, three years on from its initial release and my 16-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro is still flying. Incremental performance updates year on year ever since Apple introduced their own chips has meant that it's never really made sense to upgrade if you bought the M1. That is, until now. This year it's actually different, and these new M4 series MacBook Pros are actually quite surprising. And for the first time ever, I actually think it's worth paying the premium to get yourself a brand new M4 series MacBook Pro, specifically the one with the M4 Pro chip, and I'll explain why in this video. So, what aspects of a laptop are actually important for music production? Well, for me, there are three key things that you should consider. CPU, RAM and storage. Graphics performance is generally less important for music production, so paying an extra $600 to upgrade from the M4 Pro to the M4 Max variant just isn't worth it. The Pro Series chips have always been a sweet spot for me ever since Apple started making their own M Series MacBooks. I mean, I'm still using my 16-inch M1 Pro MacBook Pro to edit my 4K YouTube videos, do all of my music production, three years on since its release and it's still flying. So no reason to upgrade anytime soon. So unless you're doing some very intensive video work, the M4 Max will just be overkill for your needs. Now, the conversation around CPU and RAM has become a little more complicated ever since Apple introduced its M-series chips and started calling RAM unified memory. Let's discuss the CPU first. So Apple's M-series chips are made up of two different types of cores, performance cores and efficiency cores. All you really need to know for music production is more performance cores equals better door performance. The M1 Pro machine, i.e. the one that I have, came with 10 cores in total, two efficiency cores and eight performance cores. However, since then, updates on all of the Pro Series chips have been pretty incremental. The M2 Pro increased the total number of cores to 12, still maintained eight performance cores and four efficiency cores. So the performance in Logic was better, but not really noticeably better. Now the M3 Pro released last year actually had less performance cores than the M2 Pro. 12 cores in total, six performance, six efficiency cores. So the M2 Pro actually performed better in Logic. However, with the M4 Pro chip, the configuration is significantly better. Up to 10 performance cores and four efficiency cores. So performance is significantly better with these M4 Pro chips. And the test carried out by the big tech YouTubers proves it. Max Tech actually ran a few stress tests in Logic and he found that the new N4 Pro MacBook Pro 14 inch could handle 220 tracks compared to just 115 with last year's model. So the performance gains here are huge. Okay, so RAM or unified memory as Apple calls it, is very important for music production. RAM is basically your laptop short term memory. So depending on the complexity and the size of your session, you may need more RAM to ensure that your computer can play back your music without any issues. So generally speaking for music production, the more RAM, the better. Plugins and software instruments are becoming increasingly RAM hungry. So it just makes sense to go with a model that has a bit more RAM than you need so you have that extra headroom. And it'll reduce the risk of your MacBook glitching or freezing in future when you're trying to play back any complex audio. Now, Apple's MacBooks are not upgradable. So you really need to assess your current and future needs when making this purchasing decision. As they say, buy right or buy twice. <laughs> Having said that, Apple has done a fantastic job of optimizing their hardware and software 
uh, to work so well together. I mean, it's one of the key reasons why I made an entire video on why beginners should just buy the M4 base model Mac Mini. 16 gigabytes of unified memory gets you a long way with Apple's Logic Pro. And you can do way more than you think you can with just 16 gigabytes on an Apple device. Apple's M4 Pro machines come with 24 gigabytes as standard, which is probably enough for most people. However, if you can splurge the extra $400 to upgrade to 48 gigabytes of RAM, I would just do it, especially if you're using lots of software instruments and love using loads of plugins. Still unsure though how Apple is getting away with charging $400 to upgrade the RAM, I mean that's almost the price of the base model M4 Mac Mini, it just doesn't make any sense. Now I do just want to touch on another point regarding hardware. So Apple has been making this design of MacBook since 2021 and we are due a super cycle i.e. a complete redesign of the MacBook Pro either next year or in 2026. However, I don't actually recommend that you hold out for the refresh. Hear me out, Apple has been slowly perfecting the design of this MacBook since 2021. They've ironed out any issues, they've made it incredibly efficient with these new M series chips and the new Macs give you 24 hours of battery life. They have now reversed the port changes from the touch bar models to give you all the peripherals that you could ever want and need. And they've gradually been improving the mini LED display year on year to give you more brightness. I mean, the display technology in these new M4 MacBooks has even changed to be as close to OLED as possible without the drawbacks of OLED. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that these new M4 MacBooks are the best, most reliable and most refined versions of these products that you're going to get. Does it really make sense to wait for a redesign that could see some of the ports being removed again? The rumors are that Apple are going to be going for a thinner and lighter design next time around. For me, that just sounds like a recipe for thermal throttling issues again. I've still got PTSD from using those touch bar MacBooks. Never again, never again. So ever since Apple started making these M-series MacBooks, performance between the 14 and 16 inch variants have been extremely close. That still remains the case to this day. Stress tests have shown that under load, the fans on the 14 inch do whiz up and are more audible than the 16 inch ones. Although this is because the fans are smaller and run at faster speeds on the 14 inch. And therefore the sound they make is of a higher frequency and is therefore more audible. Does that really matter? Not in the slightest. They're still barely audible and night and day when you compare them to those jet engine Intel MacBooks. If I could choose again, I'd go for the 14 inch. It's just so light and portable, has great battery life, and for me, it's the sweet spot. Storage, I would just go for the minimum amount that you can get away with. Apple is still charging $200 to upgrade from 512 to one terabyte of storage. And you're much better off just buying an external SSD off Amazon or something like that. The key thing I would consider for this purchasing decision though is how many plugins, software instruments and samples you would like to have with you on the go at any one time. If you're the kind of person that likes to have all of that stuff with them all the time, then I would make sure that you have sufficient on-device storage. I'd then use an external SSD to archive older sessions and sessions that you're not currently working on and ensure that my current in-progress sessions and sounds are all stored on device. So with all of this in mind, which MacBook would I buy in 2025? I would personally go for the 14 inch form factor this time around. I'd go for the one terabyte option and I'd upgrade the unified memory to 48 gigabytes. For me, this is the spec that makes the most sense for my needs, but that's just me. Let me know in the comments below which model of MacBook Pro you would go with and why. And if you are interested in purchasing the new M4 Mac Mini instead, a link to that video will be appearing on screen round about now. Thank you ever so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.